uh, which is the like smaller Massive bit life. of. <laughs> <laughs> Someone so got good. paid to make these. Hey everyone, welcome back to Linux Gamecast Weekly, the show that covers the latest Linux gaming news, reviews, how tos, and most importantly, whatever the hell else we come up with. Wearing my um, very thin but very cool orange shirt, I'm in stone, and wearing is a blind guardian this week, Jordan. It is blind guardian T-shirt representing Crefield, man, man, Germany, with the Yoda shirt yes you know it. you love it as well you're the one well, headphones that, yeah. that, that was my fa- that was my favorite book from the millennium trilogy the 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 boy with the yoda shirt true story you know, girl with the dragon <laughs> tattoo and no, no. you people need to read some fucking books my god um, joining us live as well cocaine voltron because that's what we all add up everyone watching this on twitch and stuff man people read books they just don't collect them Shh, shut up I, I read the books that I collect. <laughs> that is like one of the reasons I love you so much because you really hate trees. I do. <laughs> they, I mean, they just keep growing back, man. What, what are you going to do? You just got to keep cutting them down and turning them to books. Hey, man. The, what was it? The Foster Noratai yeah. start showed up and eating people. And oh, like, hey. yes. The darkness. Hey, yeah. winter not the lights. <laughs> <laughs> I, I mean, you, you know what? If, if I get eaten by like book demons, fair. I'll take that fair. one. I'll take that, <laughs> take that one. <laughs> Now, what's been going on, ladies and gentlemen? I have, uh, I think I figured out it's never the NVIDIA card. It's always the NVIDIA card. Playing around with the Jackbox, still trying to normalize everything with this uh, AIO Pro for I can finish the damn video. And um, I think I figured out what it was. I, I was being crazy. I was doing something crazy, everyone. I was trying to run a video card in the PC. Like, you don't How do dare that. you? No, <laughs> on I'm a just, Linux gaming podcast, how dare you? <laughs> had a video, a video card, card plugged into the motherboard. Instead, like a normal person, slinging everything over, you know, X11 forwarding with fiber optics, uh, which is the right way to do it. According Clearly. to the Curse of the Ravens Cry guy, at least, yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, right. So maybe I'll have that video wrapped up and I can finally do the Patreon video of how everything's stuck together and like walk you through the DaVinci Resolve thing. Looking forward to doing that. Jordan... Anything new and exciting since uh, we're, we're sand squirrel? No, I mean I, I I was taking care of lots of dogs last week. The, they're gone, or the, the the extra one is gone now. So it's it's so quiet now. It's so weird. There's usually like running around or like children screaming or dogs barking, and now it's nothing. It, 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 <laughs> the the silence dog, is golden. Uh, that you did keep. Uh, is it sad that the other one is gone? <laughs> Yes, she freaked the <laughs> fuck out. She freaked out so much that that Dio, the German Shepherd, ran out the door straight to the fucking car because he was just like, nope, too crazy. <laughs> we got to be careful with that equation with the children screaming and the dog. You never want those two to intersect. <laughs> I mean... And then you run upstairs to see what's up and the child is running after the dog screaming. <laughs> right. Poor dog. Yeah. Put it down! Put it down! <laughs> no, it was yeah. It, it, it was an interesting adventure. I'm glad it's over because yeah, it's very stressful. You know, you know, having a dog is like having a suicidal toddler running around the house. So having having two is a bit of an energy expenditure. Wait until uh, you get a sheep. Oh man, <laughs> what? I don't know, Pedro. You're gonna have to. You're gonna have to teach me about sheep husbandry. <laughs> It was, I was eight years old last time my grandma had sheep, so I don't know. Probably ask Nori. I think her grandma still has sheep. <laughs> don't don't throw go Nori into the sheep bus. Is, is, she, is, is Nori's grandma Welsh? Uh, no, she's Portuguese. Go figure. Okay. <laughs> no one's making assumptions. Have you bought any like collectible dolls lately? Uh, no. Um, I, I've I, I've been. Lowballing, we were talking about it in the mm. pre pre super shows, and I've been lowballing. Who are you pissing off on eBay this week? Yeah, uh, I was trying to get a 5600 XT for Nori, uh, because yes, the 57, uh, the RX 570 is great, but it only has four gigs of RAM, so she will eventually need something with eight. Wait, I was wait, trying wait. to, you because mean, right now, is she, there pornographic Skyrim mods not working? Um, it, it's not so much the nudie mods, though she has those too. Uh, it's the 4K and 8K texture mods. It's the ray trace semen mod. You know, it just fucking kills. The, <laughs> it kills the performance. 
<laughs> Dark time and no, the lizard it's man not the porn alone. mods, it's just the nudie mods because Dory was I mean, like, you think no. it's regular Skyrim is unmodded and the battle carrier shows up and you're like, semen everywhere. God damn yeah. it. Because <laughs> Nori was like, no, women in this game just look like the man body, but with lumps in the front. So we got to change that. And the right. nudie mods have like accurate body shapes. Go oh, figure. <laughs> so, um,. <laughs> What is the horse then? Is it just a regular body with like legs it's in the just bottom? A dog I, on no, no, no. <laughs> obviously, obviously, because of how liquid it is, it it's it clearly falls under soft body physics domain. It's very, very gelatinous. It's like I, I don't, I don't know that that one man. My, I got penises on the brain. It's the enough enough about dicks let's talk about decks yeah so good news everyone uh all deck reservations are scheduled to ship in 2022 we got this announcement uh this is from P uh pc games N. uh you can find the links to all this in our show notes uh the steam deck twitter uh confirmed this as well that uh, anyone who has gotten a reservation this year will can expect to receive them by end of year. So, you know, we were talking a while ago about, you know, they've, they've been putting out the uh, Steam Decks with the slightly slower SSDs because of supply chain issues, you know, well, that be damned, you know, they're they're on track. So hopefully, hopefully they're gonna still going to be making them in 2023 because that's when my budget opens up to buy one. Oh, I think so. And yeah, if you were kind of sort of maybe waiting to see uh, what the wait time was going to be. If you order one now, you might get it before 2022 is over. And yeah. uh, Lauren Siang actually put out a twi uh, tweet announcing that if you saw something that said, it's like, okay, your reservation will ship after Q3, now that just says it ships in Q4, which, you know, is after Q3. So a lot of people were saying, eh, good move to Q4. No. It, it's just a bit more accurate now. <laughs> well, I mean, I mean, after Q3 could mean like Q1 of next year too, right? Like they're yes. they're 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 being they're being specific, giving us actual time frames. Here's what I'm and, thinking. Here's what I'm thinking. Uh, to a lot of people, got an email, and they quoted Henry Cavill from The Witcher and went, "Fuck," <laughs> because you know what? You weren't expecting that Steam Deck at Christmas or next week or anything. That money's spent. You know, you're you're gonna recoup that money later on during the year and have it ready when you're still new. Uh oh. Uh oh. <laughs> I, I mean, you, you know, there, there's the meme about Valve time, but the Steam Deck has kind of been the exception here. They've been aside, aside from delays that they themselves announced. They're like, yeah, yeah. That this, was the original announcement, and instead of uh, coming out in December, it came out in February. So yeah, yeah. I think it's a good thing that they get their supply chains. I mean, and again, it's always safe to err on this side of valve time. Uh, they get it out. And uh, yeah, they've been pretty good with their uh, announcements on Twitter. Like they say, okay, we're going to get all of the Q2 people in Q2. And they have. Again, so. I still <laughs> firmly believe a lot of people are not ready for that email. <laughs> oh, for uh, ab absolutely, yeah. You put you put down five bucks like whenever ago. It's like, hey, do you want to spend the remaining five hundred of that? Mm -hmm. And you're like, yes, but you open up your wallet and like a moth comes out. And you're like, uh -oh. <laughs> do you know one of the unintentional effects this had? Uh, is this completely devalued the secondhand uh, reservation market? Yeah, yeah, right. Yeah, the scalper is now higher on borrowed time. <laughs> like everyone can get it now. Well, almost, you know, as long yeah. as you had a reservation. So, yeah, there you go. And hey, if you're not going to be able to buy a deck, talk to your friend. Maybe they want to buy it. Yeah. And yeah. now, now, and now you can even mod your deck. Software you can crank it. Yes. There was crank it real a big good. thing. We talked about it. Uh, I remember a couple of months ago about the plugins, which was. Uh, couple of uh, since you know the steam deck um interface is all just very clever uh chrome embedded framework uh for everything so people figured out that ooh, you can add a couple of plugins to add some more functionality here and there and the uh fine folks behind the steam deck hq website have created their own plugin it's on the crankshaft um framework let's call it that uh and what theirs does is if you go Wait to a, a game you can play dynamic uh, you, you can. No! <laughs> that's the thing no! about the From Software game, for they make the one. Uh, 
with different skins uh, is that you can make your character look like anything you want. But yeah, the you can use theirs. It basically just gives you a little thingy uh, that Ven was showing on the video if you're looking at the video version. You get a little indicator on the game page uh, that gives you the review score that they gave it. And if you tap on it, then you get to read like everything that they've done. Uh, in order to get the game to work, or if it just worked out of the box, and the their actual review of the game. Uh, there's a couple of issues with their plugin specifically. Uh, like, it doesn't like the Proton DB plugin, and the Proton DB plugin is by far, it, it's not even comparable. It's a lot more uh, comprehensive in the amount of games okay. that it supports. For so, everyone without a Steam Deck, because Jordan was, I was like, I don't know what the plugin DB. I I, uh, I know I, I know what it does. It just adds the Steam uh, adds the Proton DB rating uh, to the Steam page, which is a useful piece of information. It, it opens yeah, it yeah. opens the actual Proton DB yeah. page. It's on the if you go to the Crankshaft website, it's uh, Crankshaft dot space. Uh, it's I, I, I would uh, actually, actually one argue, of the ones though. in the homepage. Uh, I, I would argue though, but like I I agree with you, Pedro. Like that like the Steam D or the Proton DB <laughs> thing is kind of like the crucial plugin. I would almost say yeah. that needs to be native functionality at this point. Yeah, if you. Under understanding whether or not your game is going to actually run on the damn console is kind of important. Mm. Yeah, just a little bit. So may maybe maybe the uh, Steam Deck HQ guys can uh, make that operate a little. Maybe, better. but then again, you think if you're the Proton DB guy and you're like, man, I put a lot of work in this, and like maybe <laughs> I'm going to pull a reverse of Valve like they did with Steam DB. <laughs> yeah, maybe. Yeah. I think that if the Proton DB people, um, if Valve Person. was going to make it official and just start including that in the store page before you even buy a game, it just gives you the Proton rating. I think Valve would be okay with throwing money at them. It's like, here, we're gonna do this. I, I mean, <laughs> we'll 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 see how well the the deck rating system works because, like, I don't know. I haven't I haven't heard a lot of stuff about that. Like people mm -hmm. people it's running into issues. It's mostly accurate. There's a couple yeah. of glaring issues with a couple of the ones that say it doesn't work, and then you tap on it and you play just fine out of the box without having to do anything. That needs work. <laughs> and again, we have not seen mass adoption of the deck yet, just because they haven't been able to make enough for a mass, yeah. you know, in, in time for Christmas or whatever. December thing you do. I don't know what it is. I was, yeah. a little, uh, I was a little worried that this was actually going to be the plugin for, we, we were talking about like that fishing crank controller a couple weeks ago. <laughs> I thought that was, this was like native support for that at first. I wonder if I, oh man. Well, can I get that USB-C adapter for my Sega fishing? Yeah, may, maybe, yeah. Probably, yeah. yeah. <laughs> they made well, the adapters for all the Dreamcast and the Saturn what, 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 uh, what was, controllers. What was, so, the, yeah. what was the Super Nintendo Bazooka peripheral called? Oh, I know what you're talking about. Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, type <laughs> SNES Bazooka followed by Dark Souls on YouTube. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, let, 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 let's see what the speedrun record for that is. I want I'm to sure believe. It yeah, right. <laughs> the, sc the scope six, all right. Okay, before you run away screaming, it's all deck all the time, we just got one little thing, and it's a client beta update. Yeah, it is. Uh, this one is just... A very small update. They've been doing very good with the, their updates lately. They broke the Wi-Fi again, but this time it's only on uh, 5 gigahertz networks. But uh, yeah, they, they still... Oh, just the one that everyone's using by default, probably. That one. Probably nowadays, yeah. Uh, that that That's doing the same stupid thing that it was that it just drops. But the fix is still the same. You just enable developer mode and you turn off power saving on the Wi-Fi module and away you go. Uh, the but this update comes with the um, guides. Basically, if you open the um, overlay while you're playing a game, now you have an option to for just finding the guides right then and there. Uh, if you had a lot of screenshots, there was a chance that everything would slow down, and there were a couple of games that I have like three hundred and something screenshots. So uh, yeah, that 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 was a thing. So very glad they fixed that. One and, next thing they oh go ahead. Go ahead. I was just gonna say one one mixed thing they added too. Um, that I, I I don't know I, I when I when I read this I thought some people are really gonna appreciate it and some people are gonna fucking hate it. But the Steam overlay has uh, achievement notifications, mm -hmm. and uh, by default uh, it would show you uh, the little pop up every time you if, if the game supported it there was an achievement progress. So like one out of five hundred thousand berries is the example. Um, but uh, it used to have an audio cue. Now that's been disabled and you only get audio cues 
when you uh, when you actually complete the achievement. I don't know though, because if you're actually like looking, if you're an achievement hunting person, maybe you want that ding. I don't. I don't know. That that, that yeah, seems like something. You want that- the ding for when you get the achievement, but every time you make progress and a little notification comes up, I'm sure that would get annoying. I'm sure. I'm sure <laughs> it would until you're looking for like one of five thousand like ass feathers from Assassin's Creed, right? <laughs> like, yeah. I, I, like I, I can see the use case, right? That's 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 all I'm saying. Yeah. Didn't they add a? Um, was it like the update before that? They added a temperature indicator. Yes. Yes. That, that, that was the, the previous update they uh, coming on from uh, last week and the like the big announcement that they had to do them and Nintendo to say, don't play your things out in the sun, you guys. They uh, had to do that. It, ha, were you able to get it to pop up or did you try? Uh, it only shows uh, if you are uh, somewhere did, there where it's like did, 35 did, or higher. Or did you point under... like a bunch of Nori's hair dryers at the deck? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what you but should yeah, have done, it, it Pedro. I mean, you, me. <laughs> does your hob have like a see-through? Yes. Okay, you could have put it in there. <laughs> Oven. You could have tossed it. Wait. You know what? You know what? You know. What? I'm sorry. That will probably break your deck. Put it in the microwave. <laughs> no, stick, stick it in the That'll toaster. Break it quick. Yeah. <laughs> We're all about efficiency here at LGC. <laughs> have you taken it in the bathtub? But yeah, uh, it now has oh. that little indicator. Have uh, you if seen you're people above that... the uh, temperature? Right. It screams at you it's like no oh, it's gonna get warm <laughs> on that topic you're all serial killers if you use tablets laptops i've seen that i know people like that like where are you at chill it out in the tub they got the thing set on like that and i'm like uh-uh yeah no. that, that's danger zone man <laughs> on the blankets <laughs> just you know uh completely suffocating the bottom intakes of laptops anyway <laughs> announcing steam bash bash i know I know what you're thinking. Your first thought is, you know, where's Steam? This, this. I want the Kush Kush. I know you do. Corn know. shell, baby. Steam Bash, what is it? You never heard about it. It runs through September 19th. At, that's when it starts 10 a.m. all the way to September 26th. If you didn't get an invite to it, check out your list of eligible games that you might have put out. Now, a discount is not required for this, but... It's going to help because they're going to feature everything if you're action bashy bash game. But here's the thing. What what defines a bash bash, Jordan? Well, uh, so they actually do list out some of the requirements. Uh, The main one is that melee weapons feature prominently in the gameplay. So they say it's likely going to be action platformers, hack and slashers, spectacle fighters, stuff like that. Hmm. It's all very well and good, but uh, that promotional image that they picked for some reason my brain does not like looking at that white background black foregrounds although, although then i am with you i think I, I think someone should submit like like a like a shell scripting game to this and be like yeah no it's bash it's bash oh man just wait, wait, yeah see how long you can keep somebody <laughs> irritated at valve with that yeah exactly yeah. <laughs> oh man uh you know what maybe it, your next ba- bashing game can come 10 out of 10 recommended by um Ubisoft and <laughs> Polygon. Yes. And, and or uh, what was the one that they actually uh, was? Uh, there we go. Uh, the Award prog- Prognosticators 2022. Uh, <laughs> most I, likely listen, to I, win I, the most awards category. You know yes. what? You say this, Pedro, but I, golf clap at that. Golf clap at that. That's, <laughs> yeah. that's Seriously, the yeah. example images that they used for this are... Very much in post law territory because I, when I first looked at them, it's like those are legit games, and then I actually look at them. Oh shit, no, they're not. <laughs> I want to play Custard Castle, Small Claims Court. That game looks dope as fuck, dude. Uh, guitar billionaire. I mean, come on, it has like the uh, like three D models from the Metallic Ops. That'd be awesome. Yeah. Driving the- person going, it's probably fine with the s- police sirens behind them. So- yeah, yeah the, the, the 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 conception of Esme. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, it's it's actually very well done. But uh, the actual bit of news is, well, uh, if you have a game on Steam, you can no longer use the teeny tiny little uh, capsule art, as they call it, uh, which is the like smaller Passing bit life. of. <laughs> <laughs> Someone so got good. paid to make these. 
And They're so I'm jealous. Good. <laughs> yeah. Somebody so was stuck doing some shit and they finally went, all right, knock yourself out. Yeah. yeah. You can't hijack those uh, little capsules anymore <laughs> to advertise for Valve competitors or uh, completely dissuade people from even opening the store page, which, you know, costs you, the game developers, money and Valve as well because they're getting their cut. Uh, so they're trying to sanitize that particular bit and say, no, you just put your game art there. You can have your art and like a logo or the name of the game. If it, if you don't have like a logo that has the title, uh, in writing, you can have text to say the name of the game. That's it. You can't have anything else. If you want to like have, okay, there's a new season uh, or there's a new bit of DLC that you want to advertise, you can set up an override for a limited time and then it goes back. Yeah, uh, <laughs> about that, About that too. Uh, so all the text in the override has to be completely localized. So you have to, mm-hmm. have, yes. it needs to be readable in all languages uh, and it will only last for 30 days. Uh, here's I like, the thing. I like, this, I like the, Flippet's take on it though. The, 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 oh, the that, that was pretty good. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I mean, that, here it is. This is why we can't have nice things like take three from Valve. You know, Valve had to yeah. stop a lot. You know, the coming soon bump. We covered that years ago that people were just cycling through that and like advertising. But then again, hey, I'm not going to miss the list of awards and the thumbnail from places that we've never heard of or probably yeah, just made up in the first place, right? Like yeah, how, who, ten, 10 out of 10, an Amazon review. Who? Just, I'm just, an Amazon review. Have either of you? ever played that game like you're looking at the words and like what no no like, yeah I'm too like, lazy to look uh, it up okay I, I recognize that i recognize that what what eh? Eh? <laughs> no the, the 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 weird one is that when we get a mention it's like okay now i know this game isn't legitimate because right. who the hell would actually yeah. quote us <laughs> so yeah going from uh what is it september 1st this will be going into effect and i'm guessing we're going to be seeing a couple of games that just have their capsule art removed entirely <laughs> i don't know uh, last thing, not next to last thing before we get out of here is, uh, oh, okay. This is the part where Jordan explains, why do we have to look at it like this again? <laughs> yeah, let, let, let's look at, let's look at git diffs, you guys. <laughs> I, I, I guess for, for people who don't know what a gif, uh, a diff is, uh, a diff is a expression of text that shows a file of what lines are being added and what lines are being removed, which is the only way we can tell what the actual updates are for Proton Experimental on any given release because they don't actually say, hey, as of blah, blah, blah. They only do that sometimes. Uh, but anywho, uh, the changes coming this time is Unravel 2 and... Uh, these are separate games, I'm sorry. Unravel 2 and Zuma's Revenge. I thought yes. Unravel 2 Zuma's Revenge. My brain Revenge read that as the same, and I'm like, shit, Unravel yeah. 2? I gotta go check yeah. that out. Uh, Outriders is having uh, has a crash fixed. Uh, Civ 6 is having a... Uh, has a crash fix as well. Final Fantasy 14 players rejoice uh, because now you can actually play it on a clean prefix. Uh, that was a regression in experimental. And also, you know, you can sign in because, or rather you don't have to worry about accidentally punching in your password wrong. Cause the, when you came to the sign in screen, it would just force the steam on screen keyboard to uh, pop up on the steam deck, you know, little, little fixes here, but they're appreciated. And if you're into boomer shooters, uh, just in time for episode two, they actually fixed the performance of a hrot or h rot, however you want to say it. Hrot. What? Hrot. what? Is, is, that an, is, is that the name of the game or is that like an acronym? I don't know. No, that's the name of the game. It's um, Eastern European Boomer Shooter. Uh, and it is, uh, it's actually a very fun game. Uh, I played the demo a long time ago. And yeah, episode two is out. I think it's out now or it's going to be out very, very soon. Uh, so yeah, no, just in time. That's perfect timing. <laughs> All right. Neat. Okay. Something new and very much proton related is uh, a game. You probably have, if you have steam installed, you probably have a copy of half-life two land run because you're like me. You waited until like 13 years after the release and you heard everyone bitch and moan and complain about half-life two. Then you get to half-life two episode two. You get there to that point. And you too get to go to the internet going, mother, f- what? <laughs> Fuck it, That's where they hit the brakes. Right. Yeah, yeah, 2007 um, was a shit year. <laughs> oh, man. I was I was IRL on that XKCD comic, man. But maybe you want some more Half-Life 2. This has been in the works for a long time. Half-Life 2, we don't go to Ravenholm. And it's a mod that you might have guessed it. You go to Ravenholm. And what could go wrong? All the fun stuff. Pretty easy to get set up, but you do have to play it 
with Proton, unfortunately, which had the added benefit of it might not work with AMD cords, according to the developer of Lutris, who was like, what the fuck, what the fuck, why can't I run it? And I was just <laughs> launching it and giving it a play. But was anyone excited to revisit Ravenholm? I don't think anyone's excited to revisit Ravenholm. <laughs> Ravenholm uh, uh, worked really well because it was fairly short and it was a very intense and heavy atmosphere bit, like very uh, pushing the Half-Life 2 engine uh, to as close to a psychological horror game as it could go. And it worked because it was tiny. <laughs> well, we've seen some different... Yeah, people always want to... Well, it was also the place where you got the buzz saws, man. Come on. Yes. Like, yes. <laughs> you, you just gotten the uh, zero point um, uh -huh. gravity thing, yeah. gun. And, and, uh, and now um, you can weaponize physics. Yeah. yeah. And even in <laughs> you can just two. shoot saw blades. Half-Life 2 just straight up dunked on the whole zombie problem. With like, yeah, you make podiums with spinning blades on them. Yep. Done. <laughs> but, you know... This, uh, you got to go back through. It's got new traps, new deaths, and uh, you know the corpses that get up, so you kill everything. And there's a demo. Go play with it. I played around with it for about five minutes. I'm like, you know what? I'm going to stop because I'm going to stream it. And that was last Sunday. So, yeah, the uh, I, some, someone in the comments uh, posted a walkthrough, and you can get through it. The, the demo is about like half an hour long, 45 minutes, so it's pretty short. Okay. Yep. And, you know, Raven Home and some people you come back to. I know a couple of weeks ago, somebody uh, released a Raven Home mod that was lit. Like Raven Home during the daytime. Mm. Doesn't that sound boring? I yeah. Can't, yeah, I can't help but feel like that's defeating the purpose a little bit. <laughs> I, I, I still want a fully playable Full Life Consequences mod. Yes. <laughs> we need to have like Half-Life Full Life Consequences. <laughs> that's, the, that's the real Half-Life 3. Sean Freeman. Sean Freeman's the sequel. brother. The Bassin ain't easy. Indeed. All right. Well, coming up next, uh, there's absolutely going to be a new segment coming up after the break until we announce that there isn't going to be one. And yes, we just learned what it takes to uh, distract me. A picture of a bunny. That, that'll Not do. much. <laughs> well, it'll distract me just uh, long enough. Everyone pay close that attention. Everyone can ask one... me a question and I'll go, what? One day save your life if you're ever being tacked by a Pedro Mateus. Pull up, have a bunny picture ready in Google <laughs> Photos. More bunnies. I, I, uh, I yeah. approve of the bunnies. I, I don't even care. <laughs> so, so, someone smash cut in the edit to to the the Monty Python scene where the rabbit just attacks the dude and bites his head off. Please, <laughs> no, no horrible beasts, just bunnies. <laughs> if, if you if you would like to see Pedro's head separated from his shoulders by a rabbit, head on over to Patreon.com/slash Linux Gamecast, where mm. you can fund our genetic engineering research to create killer rabbits that thirst for human blood um we get some other cool stuff by signing up to our patreon as well like access to our discord <laughs> research channel. sounds so much better than torture dungeon but yes shut yeah. up shut up if it, if it works for elon it can it's work for us group. damn it <laughs> yeah so, neuralink may baby or may not test lab coats on rabbits I'm not indeed uh but yeah uh patreon gets you some cool stuff access to our discord channel which you can use to rsvp to game streams that we do uh, i've been we've been doing a little back for blood on thursdays ven and i if you want to join us at, like katana did and just completely okay. carry us through an entire yeah, level yeah, because... i was about to say don't bury the fact that we we have an innate ability to suck at something so bad <laughs> like you know what fine fine i'll fucking play if you guys will just Get your shit together. Yes. Yeah, so, 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 someone stop their work to fucking jump into games. Because <laughs> so it's, it's like, this is just painful to watch. So if you want to be that person, uh, yeah, get get into our uh, get into our Discord. You can also get into it uh, via subbing to us on Twitch. Mm -hmm. uh, ben does uh, Trackmania on Tuesdays and Thursdays, if, or Tuesdays and Fridays, rather, if you want to join in for that. Plus, you know, we got that pre-pre-super shows and that extra hour of Linux gaming content where Ven and I have very important meetings about the future of the podcast, then yeah. don't include Pedro about it, or don't involve Pedro. It's true. Um, there, there, if you there's a lot of that. <laughs> I mean, Pedro <laughs> gets you... the same email, but the chances of Pedro reading it, mm. yeah. very few. <laughs> Unless it's a work email, I mm, oh, very yeah. low. But pretty but, hey. much got to put a budding picture at the top, and then I yep. lose him. <laughs> yeah, but uh, send, send, send Pedro a message on Patreon, then he'll definitely have to read it. Uh, we got a store as well, store.linuxgamecast.com. Go buy some merch. You can get some stickers, uh, although you can get some special LGC stickers if you're heading down to scale this weekend. I think you got to check the yes. Lutris booth or the Linux Chicks booth, and you can go talk to Jill or Strider, and I don't know, they'll... 
Jill, Jill, Jill will laugh at you in her giggly voice, and Strider will demand that you feed him tacos. <laughs> yeah, Strider will go. I'm hungry. Give me things. He's, he's such a, he's such a hungry boy. <laughs> it, it was interesting watching him in Discord because that went from like, I need food, and like, son, are you not going to go get something to eat, or are you going to sit there and starve? Like, still well, hungry. <laughs> well, yeah, because the last couple of times he had, he had empty and myself to go fetch him tacos. Mm-hmm. He's not homeboy's on his own anymore. Or homeboy's on his own now. So, uh, yeah, uh, we got a wish list as well. If you head on over to LinuxGameCast.com, put your mouse over the buttons, uh, the support buttons. Uh, I have one. Ven has one. Pedro has one. Jill has one. You can buy stuff for us. You can send us notes along with them and we'll have to read them on the air. If you send Ven some stuff, you can get your name in lights. Or at least neon phosphorescent light uh, markers behind his head. It's very shiny. Uh, uh, Pedro, you got something off of not an Amazon wish list, but a Steam wish list? Or just not did, even did, that. Did just, it was just no? a random game that Arthur and decided, you know what? You need this in your life. It's Hobo Cat Adventures. Uh, it's one of those janky uh, collect a thon type of games. Uh, which I'm not entirely opposed to because the jank was kind of the reason that I was curious about it. Uh, so yeah, thank you very much, Arthur. Uh, Hobo Cat Adventures. That's <laughs> I, I genuinely feel that pales in comparison. The one thing I was again, I got to work out this time thing. I might even do it on Sunday. There's already a Doom mod with a cat. Yeah, no. the <laughs> stray, so, so stray is a cultural my, phenomena. <laughs> my 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 question though is: Is it the adventures of a hobo cat, or is it a hobo going on a cat adventure? No, it's Depends a hobo, the hobo cat. and how it, much, it's a uh, really uh, raggedy looking cat okay. that okay. goes around right. doing um, non sexual favors to other animals. Yes, <laughs> I'm 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 thankful you specified that, Pedro. Yes. I really am. <laughs> it's a like, uh, breaking cat. <laughs> kind of. No, that, that, that's, 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 but the like, cat bro- is the bro- one doing math. <laughs> bro- broke cat mountain. I don't know. I'm I'm gonna I'm gonna jump <laughs> off this bridge before I get myself in more trouble. Let's talk. About unsubstantiated rumors. Uh, Intel Arc. Uh, Intel it's is dead. considering. Yep, it's completely uh, canceled. Completely 100%. dead. Never going to happen. Considering <laughs> canceling of Arc desktop graphics, da- uh, data center GPUs being prioritized. So saith the report. So this all comes from uh, a YouTube video. We'll put links to the, all that in the show notes. Uh, by a name's Moore's Law is not dead. And he has this 20 minute long uh, video talking about uh, the background of Arc, the communication uh, that the add in board partners have been. Uh, you know, re- relaying to us uh, stuff that we've heard from Tom and Ryan and so on. And it looks like, uh, it looks like uh, Arc isn't doing so good. Uh, Alchemist is having some problems and they're looking at potentially canceling Battle Mage. Definitely, or or I think the more, more along the lines of canceling Celestial once they get to that. Um, but uh, Moore's Law uh, is not dead. His video speculates that uh, it's the schedule. There's a hardware problem uh, that the uh, Intel guys have been trying to solve with drivers. Uh, the issues seem to pop up uh, based on what we're hearing uh, when games are hitting above 90 frames a second at any resolution. Uh, things start becoming a problem. Uh, and apparently Battle Mage is also getting some uh, technical roadblocks um, that are similar to this. Uh, supposedly, uh, and again, this is this, this, there's a lot of weasel words here because, you know, we have no confirmed <laughs> sources. Uh, supposedly, there's going to be a retape of Alchemist, though. They're aiming for a refresh at 2023. Um, I, I, I don't know. But the, 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 the real scummy thing is they're like they're saying uh, that Intel marketing is going to keep promoting ARC up until the cancellation is actually announced. So we're, we're not going to know until it's dead. Now, again, we're going to be covering this. Uh, we have to because I think like you at home, like. Player number three, we got to keep an eye on this. Normally, we wouldn't care about, but you might think this is crazy because Intel spent all this time and money and it's PR, and they've been doing the silicon and all that, and it's just wild and crazy, unsubstantiated rumors, which could be true. One thing I will say, that kid um, from Moore's Law is dead. Tor- normally, I wouldn't even give that a second look, but this dude is going to get sued for fucking liable if he can't back this up. More than likely, I'm not sure how that works in the states, but. Would Intel kill something like this? You might remember a little thing I like to call this very weak Intel kill Loptane crosspoint. One of the coolest things that they wanted to lock into their own ecosystem. And Lenovo was even advertising the DAOS stuff a week ago. So they just found out too. That's how Intel rolls, kids. Now, you know what? Uh, 
they were saying we're going to be rolling out our cards like and building it up, you know, A, B, C, D, E, F. I'm really excited. What What do you think F was supposed to be? Fuck you all. <laughs> Fraggle Rock. Age, Fraggle Le- Rock. The, the, yeah. the legendary sword. <laughs> but, yeah, apparently there are high-level discussions going on rego- regarding the cancellation of dedicated desktop arc cards, which the thing that worried me was the AIB partners, the people, you know, your EVGAs and Gigabytes. Uh, they fuckle idea what's going on too that's the, the the quote the quote that got me was we are trying to ride out this generation with bur- while burning as few bridges as possible which <laughs> that's we're in active damage control mode guys i mean according to what's been put out there the aibs yeah. were promised silicon like mm-hmm. in july and uh we're about out of july lads <laughs> yeah Just, it's the 31st here <laughs> yeah it's so, over it's yeah no i'd really like to I'd really like Intel to release the cards. I would, like everyone else. It's like, player three, come on. But uh, the earlier reviews of the one AIB, the Chinese uh, Gunnier, the, they yeah, were the, the only ones that actually, yeah, that actually got uh, the A380s. So, uh, and that card was basically uh, the hardware AV1 encoder because for games, it wasn't doing terribly good. And as it turns out, the issues seem to run deeper, like Jordan was mentioning. It's it's a hardware thing. It's <laughs> you can't really get around it with just drivers. So I honestly I don't think it's canceled because it's Intel. They can afford to take a bit of a hit. But then again, I can also see Intel going, well, well uh, we're Intel and we're releasing a thing, so it has to be massively popular. And if it's not, eh, fuck it. Well, a lot, a lot of this is coming on the tails of Intel having a less than stellar first quarter. So I think they're looking for ways to like, you know, here's how we can appear profitable by just axing a bunch and of stuff. AMD overtaking them in market cap. And that, but there were a lot of people at Intel that didn't like that. that. That's something we got to throw down. Uh, one of our patrons, Tom, um, like on that related some tea. Yeah. and <laughs> threw in. And yeah, that was, this is not the first time. It was the second time this has happened with AMD. They've overtaken with that but that's not necessarily a sign of how bad intel's doing it it's just letting everybody know amd's no longer on life support like they were at the end of bulldozer where they're throwing the hail mary <laughs> that was the um ryzen architecture now nice. here's the thing now to me i this just genuinely sounds like amd's got a bunch of bad silicon that they thought they could fix with software or that's intel. what it is and they just need more runway to do it but here's the problem i mean raja came out I think yesterday, maybe the day before, he said, we're very much committed to our roadmap. We're ramping Alchemist. We'll continue to improve experience. AXG, also on track, ramp four new products into the year. Sounds good, but didn't yeah. address anything that's been thrown out there. That worries me a little bit because uh, here's the problem, Brad. Everyone, including your AAB partners, like even us, analytics gaming podcast we know something's up we something is amiss like that timeline's been shifted around two times three times and uh i I thought intel brought on people like ryan shroud and tom from formerly nvidia to like de-intel this communication breakdown and with like marketing and just public relations and stuff like that which i have to assume both ryan and tom know what going on and they're vibrating like ah come on let's try to fix this and we said from either let us tell them what's going on or fix it come on (laughs) communication if i'm not mistaken ryan said you know they had to fight to be able to get out and do that tour that they didn't want two weeks ago and you know i said right at the beginning not i'm not trying to be no or anything it was obvious The, the biggest threat intel arc faced from day one was intel being intel Mm-hmm. And doing things Intel way because they have no, and we we've seen, and you know, back to the AMD thing, we've seen that what Intel became after a decade of market dominance in the CPU space, like they yeah. they don't <laughs> understand. It would appear that they lack the understanding and the ability to communicate as a company in competition with somebody else. There's really seems like they're still operating like fuck you pay us you don't we're have the option biggest, yeah right. we're the biggest yeah. fish in the pond and we have I, no I, competition i, <laughs> I, 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 I think more. that 
I think that also <laughs> reflects in like sort of how they're handling this. If Ark is underperforming, yeah, they're, they're not going to, they're very reticent to be like, hey, here's our new video card offering. It's great, you guys. You know, we'll fix the shit in the next generation. This is our first thing. And they're like, no, we have to do it perfectly the first time. And this is not going to fucking happen. That's <laughs> not going to happen. Yeah. Even yeah. Ryzen wasn't like that because the first generation Ryzen, it wasn't great. It was much better than the Bulldozer, audio that but... you're listening to right now is being run through a Ryzen 1700 that was released with a math smug. Yeah. Which this one's still, <laughs> this one's this one's worth more. I'm gonna put it in my <laughs> but yeah, no, the first generation uh, compared to the Intel processors that were out at the time wasn't very good. It was a lot better than Bulldozer, but it still wasn't very good. But it was just good enough that it was competitive. That's all Intel needs to hit for their GPUs. Yeah, competitiveness. They, they, they need to prove that they can get in that sort of performance envelope. Yeah. And and then, you know, you can you can make a case. You can say you can be like, well, hey, we have a bunch of these multimedia features that other other cards don't, where our performance isn't as great, but hey, for creators, this is good. Um, but you and, gotta also understand, like, you never live down that first impression. Yeah. No. Ever. <laughs> well, they, well, <laughs> well you, you, they, you know it's great they, for a first impression. They it's just, jump. Go, go ahead. I was going to say, you know, it's great for a first impression is just not telling, outright uh, uh, lying via omission to people, <laughs> right? Like, so uh, I don't know. Is it, I mean, they've even downplayed, you know, they've made a very concerted effort to let everyone know these are the baby arcs. These are baby steps. Don't expect a lot from them. And, you know, even to the point of like not even acknowledging the existence when they were doing the PR tour about what was it? The three, the Chinese, China only one. Yeah, the the, gear, uh, the, the A380. A380. Yeah, the 380. Yeah. Airbus 380. They were like, nope, we're not going to address that. Let's just show off this one card. So I die. Yeah, no, the 750, and then saying, oh, the 770 is going to be even better. Uh, okay, you need to release something first. Yeah, we don't. It's, I don't it's, think it's anybody all, all, wants to believe it, but I don't think between the three of us and all, everyone at home, if Intel did come out, which I don't think they are. Really, I don't. I think they're going to stick with it. It's going to be nasty. It's going to be rough. And they're going to learn some things, hopefully, as a company with how to yeah. approach this properly. But again, if tomorrow Raj comes out or someone's like, yeah, we're going to kill consumer cards because they made a point in the earnings call or meeting or whatever it was like that we're keeping the server side stuff. Yeah. Compute. Oh, I don't know. I want to believe. I want my AV1 hardware encoding. Intel, I want to give you money. I'm one of the few people who are like, I don't give a fuck how it plays games. <laughs> I'll probably never plug a monitor into it. A lot of people are very curious about the AV1 encoding. It's just, yeah, give people a chance to buy the damn things. <laughs> and I know um, more than one person on the uh, OBS team is like, fucking come. Like, really? Release these. Let's talk about releasing source code and why it's a good idea. Yeah. Limit theory. Does that name ring a bell no no oh. it did with me because it was a successfully kickstarted way back in 2012 were we doing the show in 2012 we were yeah huh <laughs> pedro could you google limit theory and see if we talked about it <laughs> i uh i was only watching at the time because i only joined in 2013 when we were the first prototype was released in 2013 yeah. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> there is a non-zero higher than non-zero chance uh yeah and it was successfully funded and i think like one hundred eighty thousand dollars, which was decent at the time but the guy developing it ran out of financing in 2018 and he said hey i'm going to open source the code which is always good to see i must i would love it if kickstarter and indiegogo like made that a legally somehow legally binding requirement for any game development or software for that matter like if you eventually fuck off you have to really you know show your work to or to or, or even like it. hardware shit right like yeah yeah absolutely that, that, that would be great <laughs> it's never gonna happen but you know we could no. here is the code though at long last it's time for the source code release that i promised years ago today i'll be releasing four open source repositories on github representing three different times in lt's development history so including the prototype that came out and, uh, of course, we have the libraries and just the engine itself. Oh, um, good. I'm happy to see this. And I just Googled and even with site LinuxGameCast.com, uh, no. No. <laughs> there was no All coverage right. of Limit Theory. <laughs> All right. All right. Well, I mean, 
And and here and here's the thing. Maybe something will come out of this code eventually. The guy I I, I read through the guy's write up of the code, and he says that like he he did his best to clean up a bunch of it. Um, the I think what was Babylon the, Five gonna shoot somebody? Yeah, that, that's a that's a Star Fury. Uh, <laughs> but the, uh, he uh, he was saying that like uh, there, there's a there's a vertical slice that's more or less developed. That is the closest to feature complete that the game is going to get in terms of stuff implemented. Um. I don't know if we'll, we'll see maybe if any of the former uh, backers are willing to take a stab at it, at least. And at the very least, it can stand as an example of how not to develop a game. Because the guy said, like, yeah, I, I expected I would have a bunch of time to create all this stuff. So I created a bunch uh-huh. of placeholder assets and I, I put a bunch of shit that I'd solve later. And I guess none of that is in the code. Base. I think time and time again, uh, yeah. learn by example of if you're going to do your own game. Step one, don't write your own fucking engine. Yeah, maybe yeah. maybe when you're working on your fifth or sixth game, start thinking about maybe doing a custom engine. But unless you're going to do something really limited in scope, you want to do the thing that most indies should be doing, which is you have this one gimmick, one mechanic that you really want to explore. Screw everything else. Okay, maybe build a very simple engine around that thing that you want to do. Otherwise, yeah. Unity is there for now. Unreal is there. Game Maker Studio. Game I Maker mean, Studio. Godot. Godot's my, free. There my you. advice is somebody you should definitely listen to is somebody who's never released a game and can <laughs> barely, barely code his way out of a wet paper sock. Don't ask. Long story. Is, uh, yeah, make sure you can, if you can't do it on like one of the, well, the big two, try Godot. Try that. Godot, try yeah. Game Maker. Get in my there. Game. Then maybe, I, yeah, don't, don't burn Kickstarter money on, uh, you Re- reverse engineering the wheel yeah i mean people want the game they don't want you to sit around and come up with a new engine pro tip yeah maybe maybe you feel differently i don't know and like eight years later you'll release the sort of code. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> stainless mm-hmm. nah. <laughs> they keep driving they, 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 they do penguins <laughs> well that was the thing stainless was like hey step one million i think i tallied up all the additional it was like three million dollars let's build our own engine again. that game still runs like ass yes even on windows yeah <laughs> guess what happens when you had built an engine in two decades yeah Pedro, that's the same thing Pedro, that happens Pedro. when you try to make a new video card i guess no no what happens when you go <laughs> pss, 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 pss. <laughs> well uh stray released recently so there's bound to be a lot of cat people that go th- <laughs> but yeah, no. Uh the uh PPSSPP uh emulator, the PSP emulator. Uh if you were unaware, which I'm pretty sure anyone on the internet who's into emulators knows what PPSSPP is, but there's a new version out. Version uh 113.1, they it's basically a smaller fix. They've improved the um Portuguese standard Portuguese translation which could have could have used it uh, many years ago. Last time I tried, it was worse than the Brazilian Portuguese option, and that's saying something. Uh, and uh, I actually do need to update the um, version of PPS SPP that I have installed on a Pi Boy because the last few updates, the game that I was actively playing on it, which was uh, Dungeon Siege: Throne of Agony, very fun game. Uh, it, it made it basically completely unplayable because it completely distorts and stretches the character models and the performance tanks as a result. So you can't play at it anymore. And even if you could, you probably wouldn't want to with the characters looking like that. So uh, it's good to see. Very, very good to see, especially since, um, you know, the deck is a thing and uh, a lot of people very much uh, like to play emulated games, including PSP games on them. So, yeah, good idea. Uh, I was going to say, <laughs> Throne of Agony is what I call Strider's Toilet after I'm done with it. I don't know. I'm going to call this, I had to go to Google Image to find some damn pictures of your emulator. Come on. <laughs> I, I mean, it's, it looks like a PSP game, right? I don't know. I want to know what the interface looks like. Yeah, uh, it is. It, it, the, that blue one is the settings, and you see like the landing pages. Um, that one right next to it, also blue. <laughs> a lot of blue. And look, this one comes with a red arrow. Yes. <laughs> there but you go. Not, not YouTube a red circle. thumbnail. Now I have cheap. a green arrow. How much would you pay? <laughs> I, I, well, you gotta have the. You need to have like the blue arrow NFT, right? If you want to have the arrow in your PSPP game, right? Like, right. Uh, unvanquished man we've 
interesting relationship been covering that for about 10 game. years. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, right? um, that, that was uh, one of the early games that we got on Linux uh, through Steam, which had, uh, I believe that was the one that, that, wait, was that the one that spite noped as soon as you uh, fired a shot? No, uh, was that, that, that was, was natural um, selection. Killing wasn't. Ah, no, it was selection. natural s- selection. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> the other one based around that. Uh, <laughs> but Unvanquished has been around for a long time, and it's an open source game, fun to play, and maybe it's still got a couple of new uh, and very old issues. But they're working on fixing it. Just not this week because there's bigger problems, and um, we're talking about a very sharp Unvanquished because. I was reading through this. They, they've made everything sharper. They're, they're working on the UI. And the first comment on this kind of hit home a little bit because they, they said, well, all the issues with this game that are still around. You focused on this? Really? This is, this is where you draw the line? Apply. <laughs> you yeah. know what? But look at <laughs> Low that. Hanging fruit. Look at that. You can't, you can't put a price on, like, <laughs> if I wanted to make a YouTube thumbnail out of that, done. I don't have to do anything extra. That's kind of brilliant. And you know what? Any progress is progress. Yeah, I mean, yeah. I mean, like, if, if if I were a software developer and I was like, oh, I can I can fix, like, the shooting logic, I can fix all the weapon balances, or I could just redo the menuing system. That seems like a lot easier time. I, I'd probably do the menuing system, which uh, they moved to a new library, uh, RMUI. Uh, it's now using HTML, CSS, and Lua. Okay, yes. sure. <laughs> um, app- apparently that, uh, the, that, that engine like doesn't have, like... opportunity to say, fuck Lua. But, yeah. yeah, as you were. Yeah, yeah. So, I, mean, I mean, like usually, usually HTML, CSS, and JavaScript. But like, mm-hmm. sure, th- throw Lou in there. Why not? Two easy steps and bit. one that'll make Vin go. I don't. I'm too dumb for this thing, but I'm going <laughs> to use it anyway. Yeah, the uh, this actual uh, post is just a little bit of a heads up on what's coming uh, for the next post that they're saying is probably going to be next month, which is actually going to be the new release. Mm-hmm. And uh, look at the kitty cat. Yeah, uh, the, that first comment uh, that <laughs> was like, yeah, the game is unbalanced as shit. Are you going to do anything about that? Two of the developers came back. He's like, look, we're a small indie team. <laughs> hey, man. <laughs> but we're going to try and fix it, okay? <laughs> it is, the, a is, oh, uh, it's open source, right? It is yes. now. <laughs> it was originally a commercial project, I do believe. Maybe possibly. Oh, yeah. So if you know, if you are someone <laughs> who that wants might have to, been the one that spite crashed. No, uh, not, uh, natural that one was got voice. Uh, yeah, bec- that, got yeah. community. Um, they released yeah, yeah. it for the community. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> I'm just they, giving they, everyone they a fair warning. Um, yeah, gentlemen, we got to get it right. Somebody could be wrong on the internet. And that we can't yeah, let no, that happen. Uh, yeah, uh, and unvanquished. What is, about the past is open source? Thirty yeah. minutes. <laughs> that was practice. <laughs> What, what, are you, what are you talking about? We don't what? You, you, you just here. can't walk out and be as wrong as I am right now without a little warm up. <laughs> <laughs> so there it is. That's the thing. Uh, if you like sharpness and you're unvanquished, you can ask. And it's always good to bring up these projects because there are people like even um, I finally wa- remember what game it was because I saw him when I got home. Uh, what's his uh, Billzoid? He plays Cube. That's his game. That's what he plays. And it's like him and 15 other people that still play Cube. So you got games like this with a community and they're there and I'm sure they appreciate anything that gets updated with it, right? Maybe. Maybe. Some, or sometimes they'll just complain in the comments. Coming up next, how how is Babby form? We go into Vagante and get Pregante. Welcome back to the Chairquisition, where we take a game running on a bunch of different Linux distributions, running some pretty different hardware these days, yeah. and then we rate it on a uh, scale of one to four launchers. It's highly scientific. It is divinely ordained by the chair gods. How dare you question it? You're the weirdo, not us. Uh, this week, we're taking a look at Vagante, uh, developed by Nuke9, done on a custom engine using C++ and SFML. You can pick it up for about 15 bucks US. And what is it? Vagante is... Vagante. I don't know how do you pronounce this. <laughs> is an action. Vangate. <laughs> yeah. Vagina is 
Vagina Spelunkers is an action-packed uh, platformer that features permanent death and procedurally generated levels. Play co cooperatively with friends locally or and online, or adventure solo in this challenging roguelike-inspired game. Uh, we did not pay for this game. However, it was available as part of the Humble Stand with Ukraine bundle. Uh, yes, Slava Ukraine, you guys. Uh, and I guess uh, let's get into it. Pedro. Or I guess, no, it's Ven. Ven likes uh -huh. it. Ven. Yeah. Ah, <laughs> you threw me for a Peace loop, Ven. <laughs> worlds, ladies and gentlemen, over here on Debian 11 on a 1920X powered with an NVIDIA 3060. It's that fun combination you've grown to love. Windowed and full screen, make with the working right out of the box. You got to do these basic tests these days because you never really know. Starting a server, however, pretty much has a 50-50 chance of just spite noping the game right back to desktop found that out the fun way the solution to this is you probably guessed it tap that proton button fam works every time like 90 percent of the time now i do want to address this because the default keyboard layout was done by a serial killer that is my working theory on this because you will resort to button mashing the keyboard where you hand on keyboard roll smash and trying to reverse engineer that before you're going to figure out how it works and you know, it does work with the Steam Controller, but only if you have your Steam Controller out, you go find it, put batteries in the Steam Controller because you've been using it as just a thing on your desk to look at for the past two years. Start it, launch it, connect it, then start the game, and you're good to go. And as you might have guessed, it's pretty pixel playtime. That 3060 didn't have a problem. No performance issues whatsoever, but we got to talk about the fun before I run out of time. I want to see if I can do this in like one minute because I just remembered I didn't start my clock. By the way, we're going to be doing that in three minutes. The game is, at its core, frustrating. It's random because, hey, it says roguelite on it somewhere in it. And uh, it's got a couple of really nice insta-kill and serviceable combat and all that. It's I liked it, everyone. I know this is weird. Hold your breath. The first time I played this game, I was immediately smashed to death by a block. I grinned a little bit. I whispered, well played. That was, was good. That, was that me who smashed you? I think when we I was me smashing my own dumb self because ah. I pushed a block and a crush. And I, I was immediately brained by an attack arrow in the first three minutes of the next playthrough. And I was enjoying that. It's like, well played again. I didn't see that. And I like being kept on my toes. And Vangate does that rather well. I mean, everything drops items basically when you kill it. So you're constantly checking things out, upgrading, doing all that. And try as you might. Uh, turning Vanguard into a spreadsheet simulator wouldn't really be possible. It's kind of simple like that. I appreciate that. Uh, now, again, I like the simple combat and the platforming elements mixed with just the spike note chaos. I think it's fun, you know, and I fear like the reason you've never heard of this, or you might not even know that was in the Ukraine bundle. You just, like looked over it. It's because of marketing, how it tells you what it is. Because yes, Vangate, it is an action packed platformer. It does feature permadeath and procedurally generated levels. Yes, it's, I guess, technically a roguelike inspired game because you could use a Nintendo controller with it or something like that. We went over that in the pre pre super shows. <laughs> but what I think this game is, is Super Meat Boy slash Bro Force with wizards and shit. And it has online multiplayer, which we tested out a couple times. I think we had a good time with it. We had fun with it. And. It does absolutely have a potential to become like an excellent fuck around chaos simulator. Even all these years later, this first got launched in 2018. It started development back in 2013, if you want the history. But I do need to speak to the price at $14.99. You're probably, probably best off because you need to pick this up with your friends. Where this kind of shines is the four way multiplayer once you get that up and running and running around dungeons. And it's simple enough to keep me entertained. With the combat and bashing and there's enough spells and upgrades and things i think to be serviceable enough for your friends out there They're like all right we, we don't hate it i liked it i thought it was good i was pleasantly surprised at three cheers who's next uh, i guess jordan I guess, can go next i guess i guess me i'm the middle <laughs> child even though i'm the baby here on fedora 3564 with the r9 3900 decks and the gtx 1080 ti launches out of the box in a very 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 tiny window but you can drag your own resolution getting into the game proper is a little counterintuitive i would recommend game developers that you put little it's little text boxes with instructions like press start and pick a character to continue instead of here's a wagon 
Get fucked. <laughs> Why is um, that screen there? <laughs> Uh, play, uh, the PS4 controller works with correct prompts, but it does show up as a Steam controller if you have Steam input on. Uh, and you got to tell the game right off the bat which player is using which controller because it does have catch co-op. doesn't figure that out automatically, so it's a little old school in that regard. Um, yeah, the multiplayer is a little unstable. When you actually can get into the multiplayer mode without crashing, everything works fine. Uh, but, you know, sometimes when you either host a Steam lobby or host a server yourself, the game kind of shit uh there's support for couch co-op too and i think you can actually mix and match networking mode and or network and local players which is always nice and the soundtrack is some decently well done fantasy noodling fun wise it's it's side scroller net hack and that revolution revelation came to me the second i got a brown potion and a green scroll that i had to use in order to figure out what to do uh they give you a save after every level which ha um which each level itself has a locked chest and a boss with the key to said chest uh, fight the boss, unlock the chest, get out of the here, move to the next level. Uh, pretty basic dungeon crawler stuff. You got your three classes uh, with four different looks each that in multiplayer, you can double up on your wizards or rogues or whatever. Any character can use any gear net hack style, but uh, your stats will differ. But you end most of the time though, even if you're a wizard, even if you're a thief, you'll end up using the best weapon available. So if you get a, if you get a wand that shoots lightning and you're a fighter, well, I guess you're a lightning wizard. Now you basically just have to become the Uber gish as you progress in order to survive. Um, honestly though, the combat here is the weakest spot, which in a dungeon crawler where you have to kill things, it's not really a point in your favor. You kind of jump and stab, maybe shoot if you have a ranged weapon. By the way, don't try and aim with the analog stick. Use the D-pad. Otherwise, you can go up or down, and that's it. Uh, if you got a spell, you got to do the Kamehameha to charge it up. I found that, you know, some, some spells are more useful than others. Um, yeah, multiplayer is decently fun just because you can gang up and wail on dudes. So that's a plus. I don't know. I'm going to give it two chairs. Um, I think really you need you need people for this to be fun. Otherwise, this is kind of a lackluster side-scrolling roguelike. Yeah. Uh, I'm going to agree with a lot of what Jordan just said. Uh, the uh, Over here uh, on KD Neon uh, with the RX 6700 XT and the um, Ryzen 7 3700X, it launched out of the box. It holds 144 at 2560 by 1440. I had to use KWIN uh, to get it to full screen, which was interesting because as soon as I set it to full screen, it would go back to a window. It's like, oh, you're going to play like that. Okay. Well, I have a window manager, so I managed the shit out of that window. Uh, <laughs> there's a, an option uh, in the menu to enable direct input, but it's grayed out on Linux. It works in Proton. Go figure. Uh, so if you want to use a dual shock or a dual sense, like Jordan already mentioned, you have to enable Steam input and then select Steam controller in the options. And you need to do it every time you start the game, otherwise it just doesn't register it properly. Uh, the audio visuals, well, if you're looking at the video version, they're, they're, they're there. They're serviceable. As for the fun, yeah, like Jordan already mentioned, it was possibly the first time in Ven um, that I had to press literally every button on the key uh, on the controller and then on the keyboard to, <laughs> to figure out how the fuck do I even start playing the game? You see the the little carriage uh, pass in front of a cave and stop. No prompt, nothing. And you look and at I, it like do something. I thought the game nothing. had crashed. <laughs> and so did I. That's why I tried Proton. <laughs> so uh, that's, that's you have to push the menu uh, button, which is, I think the default is start on the controller. Uh, and then it gives you a list of character classes and character looks that you can pick. Why is that not the thing that automatically shows up as soon as the little carriage animation passing in front of the cave happens? There's Suspense. fuck all else. There's fuck all else you can do in that screen. So why are you wasting people's times? That that just gets people to think, oh, the game is broken, so they instantly refund it. It's a little thing I like to call artistic vision. Yeah. <laughs> Still, it is a roguelike, and I like roguelikes. I tended to prefer the knight. Uh, it is it's the it was the one that let me kill the first three bosses reliably, and a lot of people liked it too. It's very positive on Steam, but. Vagante specifically, I did not like it, it. It you have to do a little chore to select the controller, and that doesn't help either. It's no two chairs. Uh, do do do, and wait 
Almost. Come on. Hey, they're coming. There you are. Hey, hey, can, 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 can you put it up before he runs out of air? <laughs> yeah. So, like, I don't, I don't know. Um, like, it's not, it's not bad. I just feel like, honestly, the combat is a little underdeveloped. Also, it took me forever to figure out like how to not get murdered by the shopkeeper. It's like, oh, hit R one instead of just walking through. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, <laughs> don't I do, don't I do. go into his house. He doesn't like. I, him. I do appreciate that it <laughs> operates under Zelda rules, where you are able to steal shit as long as you're able to kill the shop shopkeeper. And it, it mm-hmm. does have chickens. I mean, <laughs> does it? yes. I yeah. I mean, it, it could be a little bit of a toss up. I I thoroughly enjoy the way it handles uh, multiplayer death. Yes, that that's yeah. cool. where you get skeleton where, like, boys, <laughs> and like the skeleton boys can still operate around. Right, but if the last living player like becomes a skeleton, then it's game over. And you if can, you can make it to the end of the level, you can re. re- and as a yeah. skeleton, you just have a bone to thump yep. people with. That's it. You can pick up stuff, but and you can res, which is also good, but. Yep. I, I think it's kind of fun. <sighs> Here's the thing you get to consider. The three of us can probably have a good time playing any game. Oh, I mean, I, I thought it was all right in multiplayer, but I don't, this is not something I'd go back and play in forever alone mode. Yeah. I, I, I think the, the, the combat isn't like good enough for it to support that when you have like three guys and you can corner <laughs> fuck a dude and just wail on him until he dies. That's pretty fun. But I think that's fun. And I, I love the insta kill comedicness of like uh, when Jordan and I first just did a basic test connection, I immediately died because a block fell on me. Yeah. I was just like, all right, let's push them up. <laughs> right. Okay. So falling, but Thanks. I do. I, one, one thing this game does that very few games do enies are in fact are affected by the environment hazards. It's really yes. annoying when you're if playing they fall a game. On spikes, they just die. <laughs> yeah. It really is annoying when the, and the baddies aren't playing by the same rules as you in a video game. And it's like, Oh, they can walk on the fire. That's fine. But if you touch it once you die. Yeah, which fun. means the value for your health is nine nine eight. Yep, yep. <laughs> that's the max value right there. <laughs> <laughs> All right, well that does it for here. Coming up next, can you play with your Steam Deck while you are in an oven on the surface of the sun? Hot Steam Why Deck that? action. That, 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 there have been a lot of ideas uh, floating around as to you know. Other things that Linux Gamecast could do as a network of uh, news based sort of around Linux on the internet. So if you'd like to contribute your own, I don't know, send a carrier pigeon. <laughs> Remember when we talked about Doctor Who and Game of Thrones too? Yeah. <laughs> That was uh, uh, Game of Who. It, it, it's still on YouTube. And it's- do you realize what the fallout of that was, Jordan Swan? <laughs> No. That's Pedro was saying. <laughs> but yeah, uh, you can absolutely throw us your suggestions. No guarantees that uh, anything will ever be accomplished, but we will absolutely take them. You can go to linuxgamecast.com. You hit the contact button. There are some caveats, you know. If you have some suggestions, if you want to, you know, throw us some URLs or you, you want us to have a look at your game. There's some caveats that you should absolutely read at the top of the contact page. If you don't, the form is at the bottom, and you do so at your own risk. There is an email address <laughs> if you want to send that stuff. It is written down in the description and is an <laughs> inner fucking taining as I find you motherfuckers hammering on it, trying to get them. I'm not talking about the game. I'm talking about the PR, like spammers and shit like that. They just keep trying. Keep. We actually had somebody follow the rules. And we got a nice little email uh, from somebody working with uh, open source projects, yeah. trying to resurrect some things. Maybe, maybe that person will be on next week. I just want to let you know in case you're watching, like, we're going to talk about my thing. We will. We'll be in touch. But, Caskers, you can always leave us a YouTube comment, post on Patreon, any place like that. Do not scream at me on Twitter and expect that to end up on the show because I get way too many Twitter notifications. And even though I'll be like, hey, I'm going to do that two days past, I'm like, never, <laughs> never read it. <laughs> All right, well, I guess this this one is from The Curse of Kass. Um, they say, am I the only one who saw that too hot to use gadgets outside headline and went, why would you want to do that? You're outside. Go enjoy it. Maybe it's the COVID lockdown whiplash shocking, or maybe I'm just too boomer, but I just feel like that. By the way, pro tip from an Aussie, 35 Celsius ambient is way hotter than 35 in direct sun. Don't leave your Steam Deck sitting in the dash of your car or wherever. It'll be all melty when you get back. No jokes. Yeah. No, uh, temperatures. 
like 35C are taken in the shade. So in direct sunlight, that's going to be another 10, 15, 20C higher. <laughs> so, yeah. <laughs> How hot do you let it get um, in your apartment? Now, the answer is I wonder how freaking hot it feels like getting, but <laughs> yeah, it, it's uh, in here it gets to about like 25, 26, unless it's really, really warm, and uh, then it will eventually hit 30. <laughs> Even at 30, I wouldn't hazard having a Steam Deck on indoors or outdoors, probably. At 30 is fine, Wait. <laughs> as that, long as you're not choking the uh, intake, it's fine. <laughs> I, I'm just saying, man, at like 30 <laughs> degrees, if I'm sitting around at 30 degrees, I don't feel like playing games, Pedro. <laughs> it's miserable, <laughs> yeah. yeah. I, if I, I, you're I don't 30 feel degrees, like doing you, anything, you can tell yeah. how warm those monitors get. Yes, <laughs> I, I just want to lie down on like a cool floor and just vent yeah, open the, the ground. Uh, fridge or the freezer and just stick your head in it's like so what do we think about you know to hit back to the point you know if you're outside just go outside enjoy the outside all the things that nature have has to like stab you with like insects and <laughs> sunlight i mean if you know if you you know i i will say if you want to go out to the park with your handheld and play some video games just for a change of scenery go ahead and do that getting some fresh air is better than nothing you know, never mind the great carcinogen ball of fire in the sky. Mm. Well, I mean, I the mean, cancer death orb in the sky is going to cancer death orb in the sky, right? You go out with your laptop, <laughs> and here's one thing before anybody goes, I, your mobile device. Yeah. Because that was my first thought. I was like, I know some people that will straight up not, like, maybe you can get them out in their front yard. <laughs> That's a, And even that can be a chore sometimes. I mean, change, I change people change who of pace is always good. In their uh, place, they don't let go of their phone. <laughs> that, it might just be an age is it, thing. Is it you? Oh. <laughs> it's not Nori either, before oh. anyone has any ideas. <laughs> Do you, uh, like, if I leave without a mobile, I'm like, whatever, I'll get it when I come back. It depends on what I'm doing. If I'm going uh, to the office, then I'll walk back home, because... I'll need to ask Nori on my way back. Is what do we need shopping wise? <laughs> uh, so, so I, I've I've been <clears throat> I've been using the Pokemon Go as like a motivator to get steps in. Uh -huh. So I need to bring it along with it. Otherwise, it's not going to count my steps, and my eggs don't hatch. But outside of that, would you go back? Yeah, not really. No. Like, what do, do you take it with? Oh, well, yeah, I guess you take it with you when you walk the dog, right? Yeah. Hmm. I mean, I, 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 don't, I don't know. Have, have, having a cell phone on you versus, like, using it all the time, I think, is two different things, right? Like, because when I'm walking yeah. the dog, I'm not, I mean, so, sometimes I'm on my phone. Most of the times I'm just, like, trying to pay attention. But I know every time you're in that, like, peeking around the corner, every time you're in your mobile outside a bus, like, peeks around the corner. It's like, hmm. Maybe, maybe I can just. <laughs> yeah. Right. <laughs> I don't know. Uh, yeah. Don't use your Steam Deck in direct sunlight. Don't put your. That picture will come. Don't Somebody. get Steam Deck <laughs> and drive. Here's yeah, the thing. No. Steam Deck on the dash. Steam Deck on the dash has already happened. What we're waiting for is it to already happen to a person who's don't. honest enough to take that picture. <laughs> don't try to integrate the Steam Deck into your steering wheel so you can play video games while you're driving at the same time. Oh, can time. you imagine like a yoked Tesla? <laughs> <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and that's how everyone died, Your Honor. <laughs> and on that Parody bombshell. Don't sue us. Come on. Uh, <laughs> you can always get a hold of us live right here. Participate in chat when we do that. 8.30 Eastern Standard Moon Time. But if you want to get a hold of me, I'm just at Vin Stone on Twitter. I'm at Vin on math.letixemcast.com. Screech at me. You can send me an email. It's pretty easy to figure that out. And uh, yeah, YouTube comments. I read those. I think Pedro reads those because every time I mention one, Pedro's like, yeah, yeah, yeah I read that. And Sometimes, yes. Sometimes, yeah. if it's like an older video, I might not see them. <laughs> so, there is that. We do enjoy your feet. I am a slightly melted Jordan Swung shaped bobblehead sitting on your dash. You can watch me bobble and shed little bits of melted plastic on twitch.tv slash burningfool the odd time I stream, or more likely on Twitter uh, at the Burning Fool. Yeah, Twitter is definitely the best way to uh, get in touch. An account at four with F-O-U-R. You got to spell it out because someone already taken the number four. 
and they have not used Twitter, which is just insulting. <laughs> they created the account and are just squatting on it. I'm pissed. <laughs> are you pissed never to gonna pay the go. money for it? Real talk. Have you approached the guy and be like, hey? <laughs> Uh, no, to be fair, no. <laughs> I know what I'm doing tomorrow when I get done. <laughs> We're gonna roll some credits. Well, I should be just another guy named Pedro Mateus. Dude, it's gonna be brilliant. He's gonna be like, yeah, sure. Here. I'm like, that's what I got, Pedro. <laughs> <sighs> oh, we got a gang of patrons we need to thank and all the people who help make oh, the show man, possible. So many. Look at wow, we, we got our list of Oh, man. With the, with the Hubble map, our list of advisors, Omegas, Arthur, and our Chicago, or our executive producers. Uh, they are Barbara Abscoppa Show, Atomic Ass, Mike G, Mike T, Drummer, Kohaku, George, Pebble, Tomaj, and Unoid, and our little lone little Licky fan, Abstraction, who I gotta play D&D with tomorrow, I guess. All right. Yeah. And to see monsters. Very little on that. Red um, Rex, Magna, Trudgy, Veritanuda, Justin, Frostclaw, Nubbin, David, Darkwing, System T. Thank you for the notes. Plenty of death notes. notes. Nova K, Basil, yeah. Chris, Steve and Jill, who are playing ice hockey. Without ice. Air, Foxy air is hockey. fine. <laughs> Marcin. Turnover. Cheesy uh, bacon. Leonardo. Xanthoros Gaming. Game of Tron. Doom 2.1. Roo! Turnover. Cheesy. Mr. Alert. Ray. Bunch of people at scale right now. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> in, in, including Mr. Alert. Uh, we, we got uh, Simcha, we got Ertain, we got Ramwaza, Igal, AJ, Evandro, Fellatio. <laughs> Jade. Don't forget Tom. Yeah. And all the flat upstanding yeah. cannibals <laughs> blinking on the wall behind me, like Carl, Mike, Arthur, and Linux New, Aldeus, Noctilus, uh, John, Eshep, Game underscore, Mo underscore, and Tron. Beautiful people. It's been a while, right? Uh, now click on that thumbnail, fam, or whatever, and Intel, Gur, headaches. Smash the bell. You want to do the headache? Come now. Mm. All right. <laughs> Just grab your head. We will we'll be back like next a melon. week with actual YouTube stats. I guarantee. Not even joking. I'll pull those up live. <laughs> yeah. Five dudes. <laughs>